Hey y'all. This time it's us. It's me and Hugh. Um, we had a good time the other night on our live and some of y'all had mentioned that they'd like to see Papa Hugh making sausage gravy. Well, tonight that's what he's going to do. We're here all by ourselves. Um, Aaron's out on a dinner date. Biscuits and gravy are not just for breakfast. <laughs> no. We eat it as much for supper as we do breakfast. We do. And uh, Chelsea's in Boone with a friend and Aiden's in Tennessee visiting a friend and we're just kind of empty we're nesters. We're here. So we're making gravy and biscuits. I already have the biscuits in the oven. Um, I did a video a couple of a couple of days ago on biscuit making. So uh oh they're growing up in growing up into the rack above them. The I made them too fast. The first thing you gotta have is a big frying pan. Big frying pan. All right. And we're gonna get the sausage out of the refrigerator. You'll have to use a knife because my kitchen scissors have disappeared. So. Always use a knife. All right. And. Uh, this is local sausage from a local fruit stand we have or a produce market. And the pigs, the people that own the produce stand actually uh, raise their own pigs for this. It's good too. It is good. We've closed all the puppies out. You see over there, there's, there's the the little ones are the younger ones in this side. I've got a towel down because it's pouring the rain outside. Nope, Mimi, you have to stay. Just say hi. Say hi. And over there's Kaiser and Noble. And then we've got the older ones in here. <laughs> say hi, you guys. Y'all met Nala the other day. And there's Bela. Let me turn some light on. And over there's Mika and Bodie. And Hugh can't stand having doggies under his feet while he's cooking, so <laughs> we... And believe me, you'd have dogs under your feet. You would, because they lay down right exactly where you're working. Exactly. Like lay down <laughs> right where you need to be. All right. Uh, we're starting with a pound of sausage. Turn some light on. And... Uh, Since this is packaged like this, I always just cut it in little squares like this, and then I just smush it out. Yeah, and that's an important word around here, and smush every, it. Everybody <laughs> everybody uh, is familiar with their stove. I start out on high, because this electric stove, they're not like a gas stove. It takes them a while to warm up. So what we're going to do is... Uh, and if he burns it, he doesn't mind, because remember... his. <laughs> His evil villain name is Carcinogen. Exactly. <laughs> and now, I hope you're not expecting too much on measurement because I learned to do this from my grandmother when I was about six years old. I've been making biscuits since I was about six. And we had a Hoosier, like you've seen in there, in the kitchen. And she would turn the chair around backwards and I would stand in the chair and play in the biscuit dough. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but I don't ever remember not being able to make biscuits. Mm -hmm. And you'll and notice the, the piece of glass behind Huey that's broken. Yes, he broke, broke that. But I broke it trying to adjust the shells. All of, all of the glass is coming out because now, Hugh's you know, mother... Aaron, Aaron sold me some hickory log the other day and I've cabbage part of the wood so we're going to... We're going to... Now, when you hear you paint, hear your sausage go to cook, and I turn this one down, and uh, this and his hands are very clean. He just they're very stained because of what he does. So I just want to those of oh, you yeah. that well, have I'm a, a mechanic, and I, <laughs> I worked on my tractor all afternoon finishing up some loose ends on it. Seems like I never am able to get anything finished because I always start something else before I do. Yes. So Aaron comes by Aaron that comes honest. by it honestly. He does. Now this is going to take a little while. 
But we've got things to like show you. I like to brown my sausage. Yeah. But what yeah. I was going to tell you about the cabinets is Hugh's mother had um, beautiful, what's it called? China that she displayed she up loved there. She display. And me, my cabinets are just used. So I'd like to hide all that stuff in the cabinet. Plus, I don't like washing the glass. And so he was going to spin saw some hickory. And we're going to bust all this glass out and put the hickory in there. And voila, then the cabinets will be We're going to, we're going to make these cabinets. These happy. cabinets are too fancy for a 19 and 3 farmhouse. So we're going to country them up, country them up just a little bit mm -hmm. by changing the doors. Let's go show them your Hoosier. Some of, some of the people watching will not have seen it. This is, I think, what he's planning on doing if he's going to change the doors I'm out. I'm that style of door. Okay. Because okay. Uh, that, that style of door is really easy to make. But I would stand in the chair. My grandmother would turn the chair around backwards. And, and I would stand in the chair when I was about four and play in the biscuit dough and eat biscuit dough. And I do love raw biscuit dough. That's so Papa, show us how you stood in the chair. <laughs> My sister and I you both. You didn't hear me. <laughs> huh? I said, show us how you stood in the chair. <laughs> no, Santa ain't tall enough. <laughs> That's true. And I've got a mess going on in here, obviously. But I wanted to show y'all my soil blocks i did finally get them remade the other day so i have soil blocks everywhere and it's getting ready here. getting ready to time start to the, the seed, seed started. look at that aren't they gorgeous i decided that my my pans my trays weren't big enough for five of these so i'm just putting four on the rest of them that gives a place for the water to channel and uh, it'll make it easier for them to um, moisten quickly so that I can get the water, the excess water poured off of them. Even if you use the cells to start plants, mm -hmm. you don't never want to water from the top. You always want to water from the bottom. Yeah. And the soil blocks work good for that. And the excess water, she can just lean it up like that and drain it off. Yeah, I love the soil blocks. They take up so little room and you have, and, and, Obviously, it takes actually less time for the seeds to germinate and be ready to go in the garden. So if you're using soil blocks instead of really six weeks, you're looking more at four weeks. Each one of these trays, each one of these little red trays, have 80 cells on it. So that would be 80 plants per each each tray. And then these, these bigger trays have 40. And you can see I've got my peas in here. I don't have them covered over yet. But they're going to go out in the front porch. I've been doing a little bit of breeding, and the, actually the ones that I tossed the other day, after I put them outside in a bucket, they germinated. <laughs> so they actually like cooler weather to germinate. Yeah, and she's going to start my cabbage plants in this size soil block yeah. too. Yes, we are. Uh, because they get root bound really, really quick, mm -hmm. and as early as we're starting them. Yeah, that'll give us some options. Which is not too early, because cabbage is a cool weather plant. I... Even when before, even when we bought plants, we always put the cabbage out. Usually in the first or before the middle of April, we had the cabbage out. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to show you this room also. Um, Y'all have seen the art studio, but now I I changed, I moved it around to give myself more floor space because it was so cramped and crowded in here, um, and it's a tiny, tiny little room. So now I've got my easel set up over here and my big painting table. I'm not using the big roll around cart any longer because I decided I was going to actually um, use it just for my cleaning supplies and roll them from room to room, which has worked really well. I got to tell y'all, that's a trick. That's a trick. It's saving me tons of steps every day. So mm. just, just simple little changes, but it makes a big difference. All right, Pops, let's go check your sausage before well, it gets burned. I'm not going to let it burn it, y'all. Yeah, we are. No, we're not. Yeah, we are. No, we're not. You got to have, you got to make you get the sausage really brown because that's where your flavor's at. And it's not ready to turn, but I'm going to turn it. But you've got to cook it pretty slow because you want to render the grease out of the, you want to render the grease out of the sausage because that's what we used to make the gravy with. 
There's probably still not enough grease in there. He'll... No, they'll never be enough grease, not out of this. This sausage is really, really lean. So we'll make up the difference of what we need with butter. Yeah. You can never have too much butter. Speaking of which, I'll probably need to get some yeah. out of the refrigerator. Yeah, grab some I out of the fridge. I need to get some out of the refrigerator. I think the biscuits are just almost done too. I got them started just well, a little bit early. Oh, well, they're brown. The ones in the... <laughs> okay, they're not brown enough. All right. Get them a nice golden color. They're just now starting to turn. Yeah, and since none of the kids are here, the kids all like them just nicely tan or blonde. We'll call it blonde. Um, Hugh likes them almost brunette. Yes, I do. <laughs> brunette biscuits. There you go. But with uh, we eat entirely too much butter, but anything's good pretty much with butter on it. Oh, yeah. And of course, we don't use cooking oil we don't use we use olive oil we keep olive oil on hand olive oil and butter that's it but butter we don't use shortening we of course i grew up with hog lard we, we cooked everything with hog lard but and actually hog lard has no taste yeah and it's it's not it's not bad for you if you're using products that are from grass finished beef and um, people don't understand, from years and years back when we were told that red meat was unhealthy for your heart, that's because, and here's a little science lesson that, that I learned years ago, but that's because um, beef that is fed gra um, grain, the omega-3s the omega in their system turns to omega-6s, and they also no longer have the conjugated linoleic acid, it's CLA, and the CLA is actually what protects your heart. So if you are eating beef that is grass fed and grass finished, mostly grass finished at least, then you're eating a product that is not going to harm your heart. So I, I wish that um, the Food and Drug Administration would actually um, investigate these things a little bit more thoroughly before they start telling people what to eat and what not to eat. Remember when we were told not to eat eggs because they raise your cholesterol. <laughs> Look at our eggs, guys. We have just a few. 100% free range eggs. They are. And that's yesterday and today's. Um, with a, well, we've, That's only half of yesterday's. Yeah, we've used part of yesterday's. And, so, uh, but those, uh, those eggs, those chickens have free range of 25 acres and we've only got like 27 chickens, so we got about an acre per bird. Yeah. If they want to travel that far. And they they better earn their keep, because I'm telling you, that's that's some expensive eggs right there. I know y'all pay a lot for eggs in the supermarket, but we spend on just on the 30 birds, we spend probably at least eighty dollars a month on feed, don't we? It's I just say we do. it's just insane. So. Even if you're home growing your own chicken eggs, you're not saving a bit of money. You're not saving Nothing. any money at all. We just like to know what we, therefore we raise our own meat and our own eggs. One thing I can say is those chickens can earn their keep this summer by making sure they're eating the larva out of the cow patties, <laughs> to put it politely. <laughs> Because the cow patties, you know, the, the flies lay their eggs in there. And if the chickens do their job, they'll be keeping the fly population down. They will. So. My dad calls a chicken a barnyard buzzard because they scratch in everything. Cow manure, their manure. Yeah. Everywhere. They scratch in everything. They're but nasty they little critters. They keep the larva out of it, so that's fine. It's frying away. It is. But I love my chicken. Really I do. And biscuits and gravy if you're time constrained, if you keep the stuff on hand to make it. Uh, I'll start to finish takes about 30 minutes or yeah. less. Yeah, it's, it's or a less. fast. It's a and fast we buy meal. The, we buy our flour down there at the local uh, produce stand. Produce stand, too. And, uh, it's just self rising. If if you don't have this, and possibly you won't have this brand 
Uh, that's the only place I've ever seen it. I've this never is, seen this, this in the grocery store. This is kind store. of a local area brand. Now it's got the rose on the bag. Makes me think that it's left over from the old tuberose flower. We used to have a brand of flower around here they call tuberose. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but you don't have to look for this brand. Just if you want the easy biscuits, just use self-rising flour. We had uh, mm -hmm. a lot of people won't use nothing but self white lily and we used Yeltons for years but then Yeltons got bought out by somebody so we lost the Yelton brand. Well, there's Martha something or other. Martha so, White. Martha White and yeah, White Lily and. There's no shortage of brands. Just just a good a good brand of flour, whatever you prefer, is fine. Yeah, and if you want to use plain flour, it's just a matter of adding a little bit of salt and a little bit of baking powder, and you can find that information um, probably on your bag of flour. Yeah, absolutely, but, you can. Uh, I'm cutting the biscuits off. All right, biscuits are being turned off. Actually, I like them pretty brown. I just don't want to give you that information because I know you'll you'll cook them to suit me and you. And <laughs> oh well, I think they grew up into the upper rack, didn't they? pan of biscuits and she's done a video with the recipe on it. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold it around here. I want to show them. And there's always one wonky one that does not get cut out. So <laughs> that's, that's all the leftover stuff. That's the leftover. Yeah. You just make it into it a shape. There. I believe her sausage is about ready to come out. I'll see them down with the pan starting to brown good. When our kids were little and when our grandkids were oh, whoa, whoa. when our grandkids were little they always played with that last little bit of, of um, dough they and did. made it into a now, smiley face or whatever. I don't put all of the pound of sausage in my gravy. Okay, you might want to eat a sausage biscuit the next day or something. But take a couple of these patties and chop them up. Huey leaves the sausage pretty um, I chunky. Like it chunky. When I make it, I make it really tiny crumbles. I'm too impatient to well to make it the way she makes it. You got to crumble it before you cook it. No, I use my biscuit cutter to crumble them after it's cooked. That gives you multiple surfaces. Okay, time to go from a spatula to a spoon, and we don't have a whole lot of grease in there. So I'm going to put about a half a stick of butter in there. Cut, cut that one up just a little bit more. Well, it'll get please. smushed up here in a little bit. Okay. He's using I a half. That's hardly a half a stick of butter, but that'll do for a starter. Like I said, I don't know, I don't know what uh, measurements I use because uh, I guesstimate. But it usually turns out pretty good. Oh, it always turns out delicious. And uh, I do everything by sight. When the butter melts here, we'll get us some flour in there. Nobody in my family likes leftover gravy but me, and that actually suits me just fine because I always put, <laughs> put the leftovers in the refrigerator, and I have them the next morning for breakfast. Actually, I think Aaron does. He eats leftover gravy, too. He eats leftover everything, which is good. Yes, he does. Which I like leftover gravy. It's just that I've lost my grip, Patty. But I usually, I usually let get my sausage a little more brown and I have more gooey in the bottom. Let me go around to the other side so they can see what you're doing. No. We'll start with this much here. If you can just guess at that, that's a tablespoon. Probably a quarter of a cup. I'd probably so. Time. And that's not near going to be enough of what we're doing. Nope. We need about another one like that, whatever that is. Oh, that's right there, a half a cup. <laughs> he's, 
He's putting big spoonfuls in, really big spoonfuls. Well, I've, I've never measured, so I don't know what to take. <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty thick, and that's the way I like it, because what we're going to do, we're going to let this brown. I like, I'm at this breaking your eardrums, your guys. I'm sorry. I like uh, my roux or whatever you call this. The brown pretty good. Because it just adds to the flavor. It does. So basically, he added enough flour to soak up all the, the oil that's yes, all the grease that's I in did. it. And to use the old southern expression, I just eyeball it. <laughs> Let me see your eyeball. <laughs> <laughs> He has some of the prettiest blue eyes ever. He always said, no, my eyes are green. I said, no, well, I it depends on what you're... Green. It depends on what he's wearing. He's one of those people that if he wears green, his eyes are green. If he wears blue, his eyes are blue. So, he's gone after the milk. And he's scuffling around his really big old bedroom slippers. They do. They don't have a heel in them, so they just <laughs> shuffle along. Mm -hmm. And that's starting to get pretty brown. And this is Saturday evening, so y'all will Saturday get this. Saturday evening and the pouring rain. It is pouring the rain. So y'all will see this in the morning. Hopefully early enough that if anybody takes a hankering to, they can run to the store and have gravy and biscuits for Sunday morning breakfast. You figure that was a half a cup of flour I put in here? I'd say at least a half a cup. I'm going to, I would say. Let's measure the milk. Oh, we're going to measure the milk too. Well, I don't know. I've never measured, so I don't know how much it's going to take. <laughs> we'll start with two cups and we can huh? always, I said start with two cups and we'll always People add more. Be enough, but we'll start with that. Well, we can add more. Two cups of milk. That'll either be not enough. It won't be too much, I promise you. You want me to pour it while you yeah, stir? Yeah, pour it in there. Just dump it. I'll, I'll just dump it and stir later. I know. I'm just doing this to aggravate you. Nope, we need two more <laughs> cups. Yeah, we, we need two more cups. All right, don't make it too thin. It won't be. Somebody somebody this week said on pour a comment. Oh, you want it all in there yeah, too? Yeah, put her in here. All right, well this time I'm just pour it in like he said. Right. Someone said that their grandmother said the difference between sauce and gravy is that gravy will stay on your biscuit. <laughs> I thought that was cute. I started to do the chocolate gravy too while we were having this little demo here. But uh, I decided that'd be too many things going on at once. So we'll do the chocolate gravy another time. And I know that sounds gross, guys. But really, it's just made with butter it's and flour chocolate and chocolate. It yeah. It's just thick chocolate pudding, basically. So it's not, it's not as gross as you might sound. It's really yummy on a biscuit. Now, when we're doing this at home for us, we kind of have it timed out to where the biscuits come out of the oven about the same time as gravies. Yeah, but I wanted to get I the biscuits in before. She wanted to get the biscuits in so she could film me making the gravy. Yeah, I couldn't have concentrated on aggravating them if I'd had to have and, been uh, working on the biscuits I'm at the same time. I'm gonna get me in a little frying pan because I like eggs. With, I like uh, fried eggs and gravy and biscuits. <laughs> And now I layer mine. I put the biscuit in the bottom, then I put two fried eggs, and then I cover it all with gravy. <laughs> but then, however you want to eat it, my dad had a saying says, "Eat it how you like it, or don't eat it." So I, I'm gonna fry me a couple of eggs here in a minute. And my food, of course, I'm not as bad now as I used to be, but my food, I didn't like to touch each other. I wanted everything separate, and I ate one thing at a time. I'm not sure what weird thing that says about my 
psych psychological and situation. I just, I'm like my dad. I just pile it all together and eat it. Except I don't snow cap it with an onion. onion. Yeah. Well, he didn't with his gravy and biscuits. I never saw him do that gravy and biscuits. Well, my grandmother lived with us when I was little. And now uh, we had gravy and biscuits about every morning. And we had a lot of animals around here. And Dad said you take get the animals took care of and fed before you feed yourself. So while we were out feeding animals, my grandmother would, of course, make biscuits and gravy or bacon or anyhow. We had a big breakfast, but that was just part of Southern life, I guess. I don't know. I'll stir you while you're doing. Stir it. I think we need to add more. Yeah. And uh, just stir gently. Oh, it looks and like scrape it's... the bottom of the pan, and because you want to get all that burned off of the bottom of the pan, because that's where your flavor's at. And now, when it boils, I think that's about right. When it boils, it'll thicken just too much. Nice, so. yeah, it's going to thicken too much, I think. But we're fixing to find out. I don't know. Yeah, and that's what he does. He turns the stove. Oh, he does that stove. sometimes when I'm cooking. He'll come through and just start flipping. That annoys me. If he flips the stove eye up and doesn't tell me. We've actually had words over that, haven't we? Because yeah. <laughs> I've burnt things before not knowing he's turned the heat up. Well, I get distracted really easy. <laughs> yes. Usually when I turn the stove up, I have on plans on staying in here and helping, but then I get something else on my mind and I disappear. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. I believe we are going to be about right. We ain't going to need this. And if your gravy turns out a little bit more, a little bit watery, a little bit thinner than you like, just let it, just let it cook a little bit longer. Let it turn it down to just a very lightly boil center and uh, Just keep stirring it and it'll thicken up in just a few minutes. But this is going to be pretty good. You don't need to stir it or are you having fun? No, oh, I'm just aggravating you. You don't have to stir it constantly. <laughs> but you don't have to stir it often. Now we hurry up and wait. <laughs> My grandmother always said a watched pot never boils. And sometimes I believe she's right. And that's a pan, that's not a pot. So is the same true for a pot as a pan? Do what? I said is the same true for a pot as a pan? I guess. <laughs> All right, we're waiting. I do it's see a little, a little steam. Bit. I see a little steam, so that means it's getting hot. It is. Let me I'm see. gonna go ahead and start my egg pan. I'm gonna eat me two yeah. of these fresh eggs. I see some bubbles. I see some. You see the bubbles happening? There's some bubbles you're happening. Close. All right. Well, I'll stir this while you're while you're making your eggs. And I don't eat eggs when I eat gravy because if I'm having gravy and biscuits, I don't want any flavors competing. Just gravy and biscuits, that's all I want. And now somebody in England the other night on the live said that they'd never heard of gravy and biscuits. So that is one thing. This is one thing, y'all, that we need to we need to um, transport to England is this. I always crack my eggs in the bowl. To make sure he doesn't. Just to make sure I don't get any shells in them. I don't like I don't like crunchy eggs. Nope. No crunchy eggs. Oh, we're getting there. Yeah, it's going to be perfect. Perfect, perfect. Yay. On an electric stove, when you reach that point, you can just cut the eye off and it'll still boil for a couple of minutes. Yep. Yeah. 
show them your eggs. Look how look how nice and beautifully dark these free range eggs are. They're yolks. It's rare that I get an uh, egg out of the grocery store that has a nice dark orangey color like that. Unless you buy them at the produce store. Yeah. But then they have somebody a local, grows them local. They have a local grower that. Yeah. Oh, that's perfect there. That's just yeah. the way you want. There you go. Well, now I know I'll put four cups of milk in. <laughs> now he can measure it if he wants to. Never. Half a cup of butter. Let me see. What would you say about a, a third of a pound well, of now, sausage? If you'll, you'll get a brand of sausage every once in a while that uh, has a lot of grease in it. Yeah. And when you do, then you just got to adjust for that. Mm-hmm. Yay. This is one of my favorite meals when I was growing up, and it's one of my favorite meals as an adult. And yes, I realize it's certainly not low carb and really not very healthy other than the eggs. But for a, an occasional, what do we have? Gravy biscuits about once every couple weeks. So yeah. Usually not more often than that. And I actually do like having them better in the evening as a supper meal than for breakfast. Usually breakfast you have things waiting for you to get out the door to do, so you don't really get to just sit and enjoy it and savor it. <laughs> Gonna savor our gravy and biscuits. Yeah, we're getting there. I like my yolks runny, and I like the whites a little bit runny. A lot of people want the whites well done. It doesn't matter to me. So I put a biscuit in the bottom of my bowl. Oh, he's showing you his recipe. <laughs> and then I put me two eggs in here, like so. Well, now you cook the eggs however you like. And then I put me about two good spoonfuls of gravy in here, like so. And then the most important thing is, <laughs> whoa, pepper. You he gotta have pepper. He makes everything black with pepper. I do. Whenever we eat at a restaurant, I'm he will. I'm one of the ones screw the lid off. He does. Cake. If you've ever sat at the table next to someone that. That actually. And that's it, that's good. That's the way I like it. Now Patty can fix hers. She likes hers on a plate. I do. But uh, if, if you've ever had anybody next to you that puts pepper on their food and causes you to sneeze, here, hold it for just a minute. Let me show them what it's supposed to look like. Yeah, point it down, point it down to my plate. Oh, okay, that's yeah. camera's on the back side. Yeah. You. Yeah. I'm coming. They can still, we can, you can see it. I want them to see it up close. And uh, we got to butter us a biscuit while they're warm. You got to have a jelly biscuit at the end of this. All right. That's what gravy and biscuits at the best family. And then if you want it, you home just is supposed if you want, to look if like. If you want it, you just throw your chunk of sausage on top. <laughs> He just keeps adding to it. And of course you gotta have a jelly biscuit, so. I think we have some soft butter up in the cabinet. We do, but this is out, so. And it's right. got plenty of time to melt. All right. Where's one? Well, y'all, I'm sorry that you can't be here to have dinner with us. We'd certainly love that, but. I'm going to hang up now. Yeah, that'll gross, that'll, that will gross a lot of people <laughs> out, the thoughts of this, but no, we're if you go don't like dinner. it, don't eat it. Yeah. You would like it if you if you tried it. I, uh, most of you, unless you're a vegetarian or a vegan, I know you won't have it. But anyway, you have an absolutely wonderful start of your week tomorrow. And um, if you get to try it, if you get to try making the gravy and biscuits, let us know what you think. All right. You are loved. Bye-bye.